In the video today, I'm walking you through how to use the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4 for beginners. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. In the video today, I'll be walking you through how to use the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4 for beginners. And I wanna throw out a disclaimer. If you have the Z Flip 1, 2, or 3, this video will also apply to you because I'm really going over all of the basic things navigating the screen, how to find things, how to download apps, how to set up your email, uh, how to make calls, how to send text messages. I'm going over all basic things like that. And those things actually have not changed across the other phones. So don't worry if you have an older version of this phone, know that this video will still be applicable to you. Now, one more thing I wanna point out before we jump right in is this video will be taken down once again to a beginner level. So there's some things I might go over that you'll say, I already know how to do that. And if so, no problem, just simply fast forward a few minutes in the video. I guarantee you there will be plenty of nuggets and things that will be helpful and you won't know everything I'm gonna cover, all right? So settle in, make sure you watch the whole video from beginning to end so you don't miss any important nuggets. And without further ado, let's jump right in. Now let's start with a quick tour of the phone. I'm just gonna go over all the buttons on the outside to start. So on the left side of the phone, you won't find any buttons, but you will find the SIM card tray, and that's what you'll use to take out your SIM card for service. Now on the right side, you'll find your volume up button, volume down, and your power sleep button, which also will act as your fingerprint sensor. So when you need to unlock the phone, you'll be able to set up this button to simply read your fingerprint and it will unlock the phone. Now that will be one of the last things I'll cover in this video. So again, make sure you stay tuned until the end so you can learn how to program this fingerprint sensor to unlock your phone. Now at the top of the phone here, you won't find any buttons here. And on the bottom, you will find simply your uh, charging port. Now this phone uses what is called a type C charging port. So if you ever need to replace that charger, it's called a type C. It will come with the cable in the box, but it will not come with the wall charger. So make sure you pick up one. I do have a recommendation here. This is a charger by Anchor, really inexpensive charger, and it also supports fast charge, which will um, help to charge this a lot quicker since this is fast charge compatible. All right, so those are all the buttons. Now obviously you've probably already seen this, but I'm gonna show it anyway. So when you wanna close the phone, it, it's just close it up. And when you close it, you'll actually see on the uh, front display, you'll see the time. Now if you have older models, this will look different obviously, but on the Z Flip 4, um, this will show the time. And the screen is gonna go dark from time to time. And if you'd like to show the time again, simply tap the screen two times like this and that's how you get it to show the time. You can also swipe left, and you can actually look through notifications, alarms. You can control your music if music is playing. You can set a timer. You can also look at a calendar, and you can add other little um, uh, playable things on the screen called widgets, and this will allow you to just be able to navigate some of the functions of the phone from the outside, okay? Now, there's also a quick, um, there's also another really cool tip where if you were to tap your power button two times, just like this, real quick, hit the power button two times, this will launch the camera and you can actually use that exterior screen to take videos or pictures. Now let's try it right now. Power button, we're gonna hit it two times really quickly. That will launch the camera, and as you can kind of see, it says change the mode, so it's just showing you you can swipe left and right to switch from the front and the back camera. And guess what? Now, I can actually take a picture of myself using just the front display, simply by tapping on the volume button. Okay, so after we swipe out of the, the menu, there's gonna be an initial menu that's gonna show you that you can swipe left and right, you're gonna see our camera is now launched. And if I tilt it this way, you can see me. 
And when you're ready to take a picture, you simply tap the screen and that's gonna take the picture for you. And you'll hear the picture sound. There we go. So just a quick rundown of some of the things you can do with that exterior screen. Now we're going to flip the phone open and it's still on the camera because that's what we were on, but let's turn off the screen. Now, when you open the phone, if the screen is off, you can either tap the power button one time, or you can always tap the screen two times, and that'll automatically wake up the screen. And then when you're ready to unlock it, you simply take your finger and just slide it up the screen like this. Now, right now, I don't have a password set up on the phone, and I don't have the fingerprint set up, but once the fingerprint is set up, it will ask you to put in a password when you swipe on the um, on this lock, what is called the lock screen. Once the password is set or the fingerprint is set, when you swipe, it'll bring up numbers and ask you to enter the right code. So just be mindful of that. Right now, there's no code on the phone. We swipe, we're into the phone. Now, just to give you a quick rundown of the of how to navigate the phone, you're gonna find three buttons at the bottom of the phone that you're gonna to use to do most of your navigating. You have your recent apps button, your home button, and your back button. Now the, the home button is the most important button that you'll need to know. This button always takes you back to this screen, which is called your home screen. So if I go here, which is the Google Chrome app or the web browser, if I tap on the web browser, and then I go in, let's say I try to go to a website and I try to do a search, whatever. If I wanna get back to the home screen, I'm just gonna tap the home button and it's gonna, gonna take me right back to this screen. Now, on the left here, you have what is called your recent apps button. Now this will simply show you the last few apps that you have opened and used. So if I tap the recent apps button, It'll show our Google Chrome app, our web browser that we just opened. And as I swipe to the right, it'll show other apps that are currently open on the phone. Remember we opened the camera briefly when we were doing the demonstration. So you can swipe through and actually use this quick little menu to get back to old things you might've been working on um, previously. Now, guess what? Maybe you say, oh, I'm finished using the browser and I'd like to close that app now so it's no longer running. You simply are going to swipe up on the app and this is how you close apps that are running in the background. You can do that manually or you can tap close all to close all the apps at one time. Now to the right, you'll find what's called the back button. And this, like the name, it does just that. It takes you back one step. So just to show you, I'm gonna show you a shortcut here. If you wanna to go to the settings menu, swipe down from the top of the screen, and in the upper right corner, you'll have a shortcut to get to the settings. Tap on the wheel. Now from here, let's say I were to select display, and then I wanted to go down to screen saver. So I just tapped two different buttons within the menu. If I'd like to go back one page, I'm gonna hit the back button. That'll take us back one page. If I tap it again, it takes me back another page. If I hit it again, well guess what? It's gonna take us out of the app because that was the last page of that app. So that's all the back button does. It just takes you back one step. So that's a quick rundown of the three most important buttons that are on the home screen that are gonna help you to navigate the phone. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how do I find my apps? If you notice, as I swipe left and right, you'll find a couple of apps, but you won't find all the apps that are on the phone. To find all the apps, you'll simply need to swipe up on the home screen like this. Swipe up one time. This will show you all the apps that are on the phone. We have a couple that are here, and then we have some folders. These are called folders, and these have apps within them. So this is where you'll find all the apps that are currently installed on the phone. And later on in the video, I'll show you how to uh, download and install more apps on the phone. Now, the next thing we need to go over is another important piece when it comes to navigating the screen. Let's swipe down from the top of the screen. 
Here you'll find what are called the notification switches. Now these different switches are basically shortcuts to important settings on the phone. And normally you can control them in the settings app, but they also provide you with these shortcuts to help you get to them quicker. So for example, if you'd like to connect to a Wi-Fi network, it's super easy. It's the first switch you'll see, and you wanna make sure it's lit up in blue. If it's not, you simply just tap the button. So right now it's in gray, that means it's off. If I tap it again, it's gonna be lit up in blue. Again, blue means on. And it should automatically bring up a list of all the available Wi-Fi networks. So I can simply swipe through. I'm looking for the meatloaf 2.4, that's my Wi-Fi network. And at this point, I can simply enter the password and then I'll be connected to this network. Once the code is in, we'll hit connect. And that easy, you can connect right to a Wi-Fi network. Now, let's swipe down again and let's just look at a few of the other switches that you'll see in the top here. So you have your sound button. This is how you control the volume. So right now, this means that your sound is fully up. If I tap the button, it will put the phone in vibrate and tapping it again now puts it in silent mode. Tap it again to turn your sound back on. Next to it, you'll find the Bluetooth icon. Just like the Wi-Fi, make sure it's turned on, and now your phone is ready to connect to a Bluetooth device. Now, one more step you'll need to take, if it's already lit up in blue, is simply put your finger on the button for one second. This will take you to the Bluetooth menu, and now you can see all the devices that are around you that you can connect to for Bluetooth. Now, we have our auto rotation, our airplane mode, and we have our flashlight that by turning it on, you can use the rear camera as a flashlight. Pretty easy there. And there are more switches that are gonna be available. Simply swiping down will take you to a bigger list. You'll now have your hotspot shortcut, your power save mode, your GPS, and you'll have an auto brightness um, slider that you can use to either make the phone brighter or darker at the bottom here, or you can tap on the three dots all the way to the right, and you can turn on auto brightness. If I turn it off, it'll give me a few extra options here, like extra brightness, and when I turn auto, excuse me, uh, adaptive brightness, when I turn this on, it will automatically set the brightness based on the room that I'm in. Sometimes this is good and it works great, sometimes it doesn't. So if you find your phone, um, too dim for the situation, simply get to this menu, swipe down once, swipe down again, and then tap on the three dots to the right of your slider here, and that'll take you to here where you can turn off your auto brightness and manually control it from here. Okay, there we go, let's turn it back on. Okay. Those are just a few things. Now swiping to the left will give you even a few more options that are gonna be available. Again, these are just shortcuts, um, but there are different things that you might find useful down the road. So look through this menu and definitely play around with it. Now I wanna show you a few other things that are on the screen right now. So when you swipe down the first time, this is all you see. We see our settings shortcut. Swiping down again, you're gonna get a few more options. So you'll get a magnifying glass, which is a, it's an, a button that will allow you to search the entire phone for anything. You can search for something you said in a text message or an email or an app, and this will search your entire phone to look for it. You have a um, on-screen power button. So tapping this will allow you to get right to your power settings and you can restart the phone or power it off right from that menu. And that's about it there. So these are all the switches you'll find in this section. Now, there is another section to this area called the notification panel. At the top, you're gonna see the switches. At the bottom, you're gonna see notifications. So what are notifications? When you get a new text message, a new email, um, when uh, another app you have installed and when a message comes through, it all shows up in this menu here. So again, if you ever see something pop up on the phone that says you have a missed call, by swiping down, it'll show up in this menu for you to be able to uh, select it 
and go right to that message, okay? That's kind of this section in a nutshell. So that's the end of the sort of first um, step of this video or the first section, which is simply just navigating the phone. Now in the next section, I'd like to transition into how to download apps. Now to do this, you need to go to the Play Store. You'll have a shortcut on the home screen, but if you swipe up, you'll also have an option here in your app drawer. We're gonna tap on the Play Store, and the Play Store is where you download apps. So like on an iPhone, you have the App Store. On uh, Android phones, you have a Play Store. We're gonna tap on Sign In, and the first thing you'll need to do before you can download anything is you'll have to sign into an email account. Um, just like iTunes, it requires an email address to be on file in order to be able to download apps. So we're gonna tap in this box right here, and I'm gonna enter my Google uh, account or my Gmail right now. If you don't have a Gmail, no problem. Simply tap on the Create Account button, and in just a couple of minutes, you can create your own Gmail that will allow you to then sign into the Play Store. So uh, if you have one, let's enter it right now. Then on the next screen, it's gonna ask you to put in your password, enter that password, and then you're gonna hit next again, turn on the backup, hit I agree. You're gonna to have to uh, approve the Google services. And then, voila, we are now at the Google Play Store. And again, this is where you're gonna make all of your uh, Downloads, so if you want an app, a game, if you want um, books, all that's gonna happen through this app right here. This is the store. I wanna show you a couple of things in this section. Let's start with just downloading an app, and after that I'll give you a little tour of the store and different things that'll help you navigate this screen. So first, if I just wanna download an app, I'm gonna tap in the box here, and I can either type in the name of the app. For example, I can type in Uber and I can hit the magnifying glass to search for that app. Here it is. Or, let's say you want to download an app. There's another easy way to do this, and you simply tap on the microphone and say the name of the app, just like this. Netflix. Now, just that easy, you can get Netflix to come up, and we can tap on the green button to the right. This is the button that will download it to your phone. It's the install button. And just as a disclaimer, if you ever see that green button, but it doesn't say install, instead it says a price, that's telling you that it's not a free app, that it is a paid app. You will have to have a credit card on file for that. So just be mindful of that. If you do see a price, make sure it's something you're okay paying for. We just downloaded the app. Now, pop quiz, let's see if you remember where all your apps were stored. Let's hit our home button right here. We're gonna swipe up, and this is our app section like we showed earlier. This is the new app we just downloaded, which is the Netflix app. And if I wanna go to it, I can simply tap on the icon, and that'll take me into Netflix. So that is the easy process to download an app. Now, another pop quiz, how do I get back to the Play Store if I want to continue to look at it? I can always tap it here, because it's on our home screen, but I can also tap on the Recent Apps button here, swipe over, and look, my Play Store is right in the Recent Apps section. I can tap here to get right back to the Play Store. So, all right, we've downloaded this app. Now, I want to go back to the main page of the uh, Play Store and I wanna look around. What's an easy way to do that? I'm gonna use my back button that we just learned about and that's gonna take us back one page. Let's tap it again to get back to the main page and now we're on the main page of the Google Play Store. Now a few things I just wanna point out to help you navigate this store. At the bottom you'll find uh, some sections. So you'll find a game section that'll just have games. Then you'll have an app section, which you'll find a lot of other things that are not just games, but 
productivity apps, ride share apps, food ordering apps, you name it, there's an app for it. At the top of the screen, there is um, a breakdown to help you navigate the app section. So there's top charts, which is most popular apps, free. You can change this to top grossing, top paid, apps just for kids in the kids section. You can go to categories and you can search based on specific topics. I only wanna see apps around finance. Let's go to the finance section. It'll show you all the best finance apps. So that's just a little, um, little shortcut on how to navigate the store to find the best apps. Keep in mind there are over a million apps in the Play Store, so you can get lost in here. So use these different tabs here to sort of get to the sections to help you kind of narrow down the search of what's available. Now, there's also an offer section where you'll find deals on uh, different services, different apps. Um, so definitely look through there. Sometimes there's deals on games. And then there's a book section where you can buy books and you can download them to your phone and read them as well. We're all done with apps for now, so we're gonna tap our home button and get back to the home screen. So let's start with how to make a call. So you're gonna go to the green phone button in the bottom left corner. This will take you to the phone app. If you tap on keypad, this is where you'll bring up the numbers to basically initiate a call. And we're gonna enter a phone number now. So here's a phone number, and we're gonna hit this green button after we've entered the number. Hit the green button to start the call. And just that easy, that's a call. If you wanna put it on speaker, you can hit the speaker button here. Obviously mute is here. If you're linked to Bluetooth headphones, you can tap on the Bluetooth icon and it will allow you to play the audio in your Bluetooth headset. And when you're all done, oh, if you'd like to bring up the numbers, maybe you need to dial one for English and two for Spanish, there are the numbers. And when you're all done with the call, hit the red button to end the call. So that is simply making a phone call. Now, when someone calls you, this is what it will look like, and this is the process to answer the phone. So I'm gonna initiate a call, and there's our call. So you can either, let's turn it down a little bit. Okay, so you're gonna take your finger on and put it on the green button, and you'll need to hold down and drag. That's how you answer the call, and same thing when you're ready to end the call, hit the red button. Now let's initiate it again. This time, I don't want to answer the call. I want to decline the call. Take your finger, put it on the red button, and notice just hitting the button is not going to decline the call. You have to put it on the button and drag up the screen, and that will decline the call, so it will not answer the call. So that's the first scenario of what it'll look like to answer the phone. Now there's another scenario where it'll look different when a call comes through and let's go over that next. So if I'm in an app and I'm doing something and someone calls me, it's gonna look different. So you need to be ready for that. So you'll see it as a pop-up at the top of the screen. This time you either tap the button to answer it or tap the red button to decline it. So I'm gonna decline this call. I'm just gonna tap the red button. Now, if you wanna decline it and you wanna send them a text message at the same time, you can tap on send message and it'll give you some options here. So you can actually send them a text that says, please text me. That'll automatically decline the call and it'll send them a text that says, hey, please text me, meaning I can't talk right now. So. Those are the two scenarios you'll have to look out for in terms of answering the phone, and that is the process to answer the phone. Now, next, let's go over how to send a text message. So, right next to the phone app is the messages app here. We're just gonna tap on that. And if we'd like to send a message, you need to start with tapping on this little bubble in the bottom right corner. And this is the page where you'll need to enter either a phone number or a name of a contact that you'd like to send a text message to. So 
Here we're gonna tap on this little icon here. This is the keypad icon, and this will bring up the numbers and allow you to then enter the phone number that you would like to text. So I'm gonna enter a number now, and then I'm gonna hit done. So guess what, I enter a number of someone who was already in my contacts. There's the number here. I'm now gonna tap in the box that says text message and it will bring up the keyboard and it will allow me to start typing my message. And so I can say, hi. After you type the message, you'll need to tap on this button. It's the send SMS button and that will send your text message. If you'd like to add an emoji, tap on the icon to the right of the box. This will bring up all your emojis and you can then add something cool, maybe an alien and a cool uh, emoji. Hit the send button, use our back button to close out the keyboard and there's our message. Now guess what, there's a, a couple other cool things you can do in here. So if you hold down on the microphone, you can actually record a short message up to two minutes and then you can send it to the person. So watch this. Hey buddy, hope you're having a good day. You'll need to keep your finger on that red button while you're talking and as soon as you're done, pick up your finger and then it will save that voice message and allow you to send it and they can listen to it on the other end. Let's tap on it and play it before we send it. Hey buddy, hope you're having a good day. Just that easy, you can send a quick voice message hit the SMS button to send it. There's our voice message, you can always play it back later. Now if you'd like to send a picture, you can tap on the button to the left of text message, which is right here. And that button will allow you to look through pictures you've already taken on the phone. Maybe you took this cool picture earlier and you wanna send it, you can tap on this picture, it'll add it to your message. You can also take a new picture by simply tapping on the camera icon right here. And I can just size up my shot here and tap on the little circle. That's gonna take that picture for me. And now I can tap the attach button to attach that picture to my text message. And then I'm gonna hit the back button to get rid of that menu. And you can see here are two pictures that are added and they're ready to be sent. All I have to do is tap on this SMS button to send the message. And now I've just sent a picture in a text message. Now, you've sent your message, and here you can see your other messages are gonna show up in this section. If someone sends you a text, the text on this side will be bold. So anything that is in bold letters will, will basically be indicating to you that that's a new message. So right now, these are not in bold, which means these are not new messages. These are messages that I've already read and or sent. And that's it. Let's go ahead and hit our home button. And that concludes the section of how to send and receive text messages. You'll tap on the camera button in the bottom, left, bottom right corner to launch the camera. Now right now the camera is on the front camera and if you want to switch the camera you can always tap on the button to the right of your shutter which is right here. That'll switch the camera. You can also use a gesture. You can simply swipe up and that will switch back to the front camera and swiping is the easy way to switch between the cameras. There we go. Now if you tap on this icon, you've got two icons here, and the one on the left here is your wide angle mode. So tapping on this will actually widen your shot and allow you to get more in your picture. You won't see it as much with the front camera, but the rear camera, it'll go uh, a lot wider. So just keep that in mind. Now, you have your different camera modes in this row right here. And so you can slide your finger left and right to maneuver through these different menu options. So we're on photo right now. To the right is video. Your shutter button will change to a red dot and that's indicating that now you're on the video mode 
and you'll be set up to take videos, not pictures. Now, when I hit the red button and I start recording, you will have a camera button to the left that will allow you to take snapshots while your phone is recording video. That's pretty cool. You can also switch between the front and the rear camera while it's recording, so that's pretty cool. Hit the button to the right to stop the video recording. And then if you'd like to see the video that you took or the picture you took, to the left of the shutter button, you'll find your review button. This will take you to your photo gallery and allow you to go through and look at all the pictures that you've just taken. And then you have this button, which is, this is your share button. It'll allow you to then send that picture um, to a contact as a text, as an email, or even through a social media. If I hit my back button, it'll take me out of the gallery and back to the camera uh, menu. And just to show you, you have this section here called more, and you'll have a lot more advanced picture settings in this area. So feel free to play around with these and look for new and fun things you can do. And to the left, you'll have the portrait mode. Now, this is the mode that will allow you to take an up close picture of something and it will blur out the background. So if you want that cool effect, it's called the bokeh effect. You can simply go to the portrait mode and then take a picture of someone up close and it will make sure that they're in focus and it will blur out the background. Let's hit our home button now and get out of the camera. Now, let me show you how to get to the gallery if you're not in the camera. Let's say you wanna just look through all the pictures you've taken today, no problem. Swipe up, tap on the gallery, and here you'll find the different folders that have been created with your pictures. So this is the recent albums folder. We're gonna tap here, and I can look at all the pictures that we just took on the camera, just like that. And that's a quick rundown of how to take pictures on the phone. Now, I wanna show you one more thing as well. Obviously, you have the flip phone, and there's some cool add-ons you have because you have this phone. And one of those add-ons is when you tilt the phone and you put it in this mode, you can actually take pictures while the phone is sitting up and it gives you a special menu at the bottom here so you can see more of your options. So I can have the phone sit up just like this and take some pictures just like that. I can switch to that front camera and this is a great mode for taking selfies. So I can size up my picture, hey! And just that easy I can take a selfie. All right, same thing with recording video. You can also have the phone sit up in that position to take some really great videos as well. Now let's tap on the Google folder you'll find on the home screen and tap on Gmail. And so we already signed into a Gmail when we set up our Google Play Store account, if you remember. Now, some of you only have one Gmail, some of you have multiple Gmails, and some of you have a lot of different email accounts like me, and I wanna show you how to sign into all of those accounts. Now, guess what? You might have an AOL, you might have a Yahoo. Did you know you can sign into those other email types through the Gmail app? That's right. Simply tap on the add another email address option and it'll take you to this menu and allow you to select another email type to sign into. So for example, I want to sign into a Yahoo. I'm going to tap on Yahoo. It'll take me to this screen and it'll allow me to enter my Yahoo information to sign into my account. Let's hit our back button. If you have an Outlook or a Hotmail or an Exchange, you can use some of these other options. But notice what you don't see on this screen. You don't see AOL. You don't see sbcglobal.net. Um, there's a few that you don't see here. And so I wanna show you a trick on how to find another app that will allow you to sign into those other email accounts in an easy way. Let's hit our home button. 
Let's go back to our Play Store, which is where we download apps. At the top where it says Google Play, I'm going to tap in the box. And I'm going to first type on this Symbols button in the bottom left corner. And then I'm going to tap on the At symbol. All you have to do is type in what you see to the right of the at symbol in your email account. So for example, I want to search for an app that is going to make it easy for me to sign into my AOL email address. I'm going to tap on just AOL.com and hit the search button. Now, oh, one change. So wait, let's back out. So we're in the book section. Make sure you're in the app section or that will affect what is searched. Good point. Let's go back to search again. Since I already searched for AOL.com once, it'll be in my recent searches and I can simply tap on it to search for it again. And now it's going to recommend different apps that are going to link well with AOL. And guess what? AOL has their own email app and I'm just simply going to install that one and it'll be easier to sign in directly through AOL's app. So I hit the install button and now it's downloaded that app to the phone. Now I want to tap in the box here and give you one more example. Um, a lot of people have still have these sbcglobal.net email addresses. This is if you had uh, AT&T uh, home internet service in the past, you probably have one of these email types. So you're going to type in at sbcglobal.net, hit the search button, and then it will show you a list of apps that support the sbcglobal.net email type. One being the Yahoo app, and you can simply tap on the install button. Or you can come down to the My at and app and you can use that one as well. But this is giving you a specific app that will work with that email type. Let's hit our home button. Swipe up to get to our app drawer section and now we can see our new AOL app is downloaded. I can use this to sign into my AOL account and I can use my new Yahoo Mail app to sign into my spcglobal.net email account. So hopefully that's helpful and kind of encompasses some people that maybe don't have a Gmail and maybe have these other email types. Now we're going to close out our video with how to set up a passcode for the phone to secure your phone and also how to set up the fingerprint sensor so you can unlock the phone simply by tapping on the button right here. Okay, so the first thing we'll need to do and let me show you this cool shortcut simply swiping down from the top of the screen and looking in the upper right corner will take you to the settings wheel tap on the wheel from here we need to go up to the security and privacy or excuse me not that section we're going to start with our lock screen section and then we're going to tap on lock screen type from here we're going to decide what type of security we would like to use and i normally like to use the um, pattern pattern or pin are, are my favorites because they're really easy to use let's do the pin you're going to select a four digit pin to secure your phone. You'll need to use this pin every time you want to sign in and use your phone. I'm going to use 0000, press continue, and then hit it again. 0000, press OK. And now I have a pin code set up on the phone. If I were to tap on the power button and tap it again, if I try to swipe into the phone, it will require a pin first before I can access the phone. So I'm going to enter our pin, which is 0000, press OK, and now I'm back in the phone. If I hit the back button from this screen, now I want to go to the security and privacy section. I want to swipe up and go to biometrics. This will allow you to either add a fingerprint and or a face uh, recognition option to sign into the phone. So um, in the fingerprint section, it's really easy. You're going to enter your pin one time, press continue. 
and then you're going to tap on the power button and it's going to begin to learn your fingerprint and this will make it easier for you to unlock the phone in the future. Now a rule of thumb here is try to pick up the phone and try to hold the power button or tap your finger on the power button how you would normally do it. Don't try to do it in an odd way because the phone needs to learn your finger the way you're going to touch the button. So we programmed our finger, hit done. Now if I lock the phone, I take my finger, I tap the button, it will automatically wake up the phone and it will unlock the phone. And that is the process to unlock the phone with your fingerprint. We have reached the end of the video. I hope this video was helpful. Um, this. I just want to reiterate is a beginner video. It's for first time users and I often get a lot of people who are switching from an iPhone to an Android phone. So I try to really take this down to kindergarten basic levels. If this video was way too slow for you, you weren't the target audience. Um, this video was for someone who was new and really wanted a rundown of all the different processes and that's what we tried to cover. So I hope you guys found this helpful. If it was, take a minute and hit that like button. That's how you can support our channel so I can continue to make amazing videos for you. Um, if you're not already a raised subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Uh, leave me a comment down below. Let me know if the video was helpful and let me know what section was the most helpful for you. Thanks again for watching. Take care and as always, have a good one.